Okay, what's our script? Opening. Okay, we're going to open with build it. So build it. Okay, so I need golf glove for build it. Golf glove. For build it. Ow! What the heck? Who put, who put golf tees in my golf glove? Ouch. Shoot. Oh, great. Golf club upside down. Yeah, real, real funny. So, okay, let's just start. Okay, build it segment. Here we go. Let's build it. Okay, guys, that's not funny. I, that's it. I quit. I am out of here. That isn't funny at all. I'm leaving. No, Rob, wait, 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 wait. We're sorry, man. We're sorry. Here, just come back and do the show. Get no. some chocolate. Chocolate? Yeah, just okay. like you like. Okay, I'll I'll stay I'll stay and do I'll do the show. Good boy. Chocolate. Okay, so so it's it's golf kingdom time and I've got chocolate and we've got a great show. Let's bring in our blueprint. It's build it right off the top and we've got kiss and pop culture. Pop culture. It's going to be about thing one and thing two to help your game. Then we're going to talk about poison grapes in the mental game. Yeah, we don't want to eat any poison grapes to hurt our game. And then at the bottom, we're gonna bring in the putting service announcement, PSA and X putt. And as always, we're gonna close with time to rise. Are you ready? Cause it's time to build here in the golf kingdom. Welcome to the number one golf variety show in the world, the golf kingdom. Are you ready to build your game? Here's your host, Rob Strano. Well, the crew has guaranteed me that the practical jokes and craziness has stopped. It will not continue this for the show. Otherwise, you hear me guys, the show ends, okay? So don't push me. And it's the build it segment where I'm gonna help you build better parts to your swing. Now here's what we're gonna talk about. We're gonna talk about understanding the arms as they go back, especially what's called running out of lead arm. We don't wanna run out of lead arm as we go back, but we do. Now here's what that means. Daredevil, throw me over to the big screen here. So lead arm, I'm a right-handed player. Lead arm is my left arm. If I was playing left-handed, it'd be my right arm. So what does it mean to run out of lead arm? When I set up to the golf ball, as you look down at me, my fingertips are equal. As I go back, uh-oh, this arm's longer than this one. That means I ran out of left arm. I've got one arm longer than the other. Well, what does that mean to the golf swing? And how does that affect the cocking of the club as it goes back or the hinging of the wrists, which is kind of something that happens automatically if you do this part correct. So here we go, we're gonna talk about it now. So as I go back, I've got nice extension right here. This is where I run out of arms. My right arm starts to get longer and my left arm can't get longer from here. So I've got good extension here. I run out of left arm and, and to keep going, the trail arm has to bend. So in order for that to not get stretched out of shoulder socket, this arm has to now bend to keep the arms and hands the same length here. When this arm bends, what's interesting is the force that this hand, this trail hand applies to the grip is what makes the club hinge and the club head come up. So watch me as I go. So I've got extension. So my arms are equal right here. Now, when I get to there, this one will start to bend, and it's that bending motion. You can see my hand, my trail hand is coming at me, and as I bend it and it comes at me, that's what makes the club snap up in the air. So I'm here, that bends and it snaps up in the air and I get the correct amount of wrist hinge. I don't need to force the hand action. The hand action happens automatically if we get this part correct. Look at it from the down the line view now. There's the good extension. My hands are equal right here. And then this is gonna bend, this elbow will point to the ground. So extended, elbow bends, club hinges up, and we've got this nice little set position right here. So understanding the phrase, I run out of left arm. If you get that and understand this little bit of elbow bend, not this elbow bend, but this little bit of elbow bend, it will get the club in the right spot here. You'll make this nice L or 90 degree angle, and you've got it, and you're on your way to getting this position right when you swing. Well, guess what? I've gone black and white, thing one, thing two, it's pop culture. I've got fun stuff from movies, songs, taglines, catchphrases to help your game. And we're going Dr. Seuss. We're going, like I said, thing one and thing two to help your game. And we're gonna do this, gosh, in a logical order. We're gonna start with 
thing number one. So thing number one is your trail shoulder. What should your trail shoulder do when you swing a golf club? And maybe more importantly, what shouldn't it do? So let's talk about thing one here. So the trail shoulder. As the trail shoulder goes back, I do not want it to go parallel to the ground. See, thing one is perfectly parallel to the ground. It's like it's written on a line of stationery here, a notebook paper, thing one. As you go back, the trail shoulder needs to go up, like I'm stretching my hand to the sky. This shoulder stretches away from this hip. I want stretch here as I go back. I don't want sag down here as I go back. A lot of players struggle with getting set up and going there in their backswing and keeping thing one nice and level here and you end up with the backswing that's down like this. We want to go back, let that trail shoulder get up, stretch it away from the trail hip and get your hands in a good spot here at the top of your swing where your elbows are nice and level and this lettering, this thing one is, you can see it's angled to the ground. So number one thing right here, thing one, let's get it there. Now that's to the top of the backswing. Let's look at thing two. What does thing two do as we swing down to the ball? And I'm gonna swing right at you here so you can see thing two. So at the top of the backswing, you can't see it, it's turned here. Thing two, the mistake everybody makes is they come down and they keep thing two right here nice and level to the ground. Their knee is bent and you can't turn your hips through and your belt line is level. We don't want that. We want thing two, this lead hip to be turned and up and away so that this hip is down, which gives us this nice side bend and impact. So as I come to you now and swing through, I'm coming down to impact. Thing two is gonna go that way and go up. See how it goes that way and springs up, this hip down, this hip up, and my belt line here is at an angle. It's not level, it's at an angle. So pop culture, thing one, thing two. Remember, going back, thing two, or thing one, this shoulder goes up, and gives us nice stretch here. And then as we come down, this thing right here will go south behind me. Thing two goes south behind me. And I get angle in the hips and I get a nice side stretch here. So two side stretches for thing one and thing two to help you get it just right when you swing. Well, here we go. Mwah, mwah. Double kisses, double great kiss segment for you. Keep it simple, Strano, something easy to help your game. We're gonna talk about your noggin. We're gonna talk about the noodle. We're gonna talk about this thing above your shoulders. Getting your head in the right position because I get a lot of bad head positions from my players. I'm gonna give you two things real quick to help you get it right. Number one is when you stand up straight, your head's on straight. I always said like your dad says, get your head on straight, son. Get your head on straight. But understand when we tilt to hit a golf ball, my eye line changes. My head gets pitched this way. So when I get down to the ball, I look like that. I don't look like this because if I stood up straight, I'd be crooked this way. Second thing is what I call the turtle head in the shell. Now I'm going to stand sideways for this one. I get players that will set up and do this. They'll take their head and stick it down like that, like the turtle head popping out of the shell. You want to keep your head and spine lined up there. So my chin's up and my head is back. I don't have my head down like this looking at the golf ball. So keep it simple, Strano, Mwah. right there. Head position, understanding how to get your head on straight, right here. And then, I don't know why I did a sound effect, but I did, head on straight here and then getting your turtle head in the shell, right there. Now, stay tuned. We got more great stuff coming up here on the Golf Kingdom, faster than one swing and one putt. Alexa, open Golf Kingdom. Welcome to Golf Kingdom. Here's your golf tip of the day. Welcome to the Golf Kingdom. I am your host, Rob Strano, and here is today's Pro Pointer. Alexa, stop. If you want more Pro Pointers from me via your Amazon-enabled skill at the Golf Kingdom, be sure to go there and enable it. Every day, I give you a new tip, free, with your Amazon-enabled device. So enable the Golf Kingdom and you'll get a tip from me, your host, Rob Strano, every day. Welcome back to the Golf Kingdom. It's time for It's Just Hot Air, brought to you by our friends at Executive Air. 
See them for all your air, heating, and refrigeration needs. So come on in, just hot air. It's the myths and misconceptions of golf. It's the thing your buddy tells you that's, you know what, 100% wrong. And we're down low talking about tee height here. Yeah, how high do you tee up the driver? That's what we want to talk about. And we have these new longer tees now, which are interesting in that I see players all the time stick these tees barely in the ground and the, the ball's a mile in the air. So like I've got a ball teed up real low here, like you'd hit an iron and that might be if I want to hit driver low. And then this one over here is teed up really high and it's perfect height for the driver. As you see, half the driver is, a, is right at the middle of the golf ball right here. Top of the driver, middle of the ball. Well, what I see players do all the time is they take these long tees, they stick them barely in the ground and they put the ball on it. Now that ball is above the top of the club. The ball's here and the club's there and they're skying it up in the air or they're standing up and trying to hit it and they're messing up and missing it to the right because when you stand up, the ball tends to go to the right. So taking these long tees and barely sticking them in the ground and having the ball a mile in the air isn't the right way to do it. You know what? That's a myth and misconception. It's just hot air. Remember, tee at the right height with the driver, half the ball above the top of the club, and you'll get it right without having to make a compensation. This has been a great segment brought to you by our friends at Executive Air. Remember, see them for all your air, heating, and refrigeration needs. Fitness time again in the golf kingdom, and fitness fun always involves Tiffany Tracy over in Houston, Texas with GFX Fitness and Orange Whip. Tiffany, how you doing today? Great to see you. Yeah, so good to see you too, Rob. So you've got, looks like you're leaning on the light speed there, and you got the power That's peel. Right. What are we working on with our players? Tell us. We are going to be working on impact today. So I'm excited to introduce to you guys the light speed. Now, first, you're going to be hinging over into your golf stance setup. Next, I'm going to have you go into impact. So you're going to move those hips, aim towards the target. Your handle is going to be a little ahead of that club, and you're going to take it back into your backswing and then to your finish, trying to mimic that same position that you started off with, with the impact. And that is the tip of the week, Rob. That's great. I love that little tip about open up into, into your impact position, preset that impact, go back with the light speed, and then whoosh it right on through and get right back to that spot. That'll really help right. you out there. Get yourself understanding where do I need to be at impact and then dynamically mm -hmm. move it. Tiffany, when you exactly. do that with your players that you train, do you find their dynamics and their movement, they, did they get it real quick and get going quick? So I always teach my clients or players to first move, do the movement slow before you speed things up. So that's why we had you set into that impact position. So feel what correct position feels like, then move into the full, the full swing. And yeah, absolutely. They're going to be moving more efficiently because now they're, they're positioning themselves in the correct swing planes um, at the correct posture. And the, the result is then a more quick, more powerful, more fluid swing. I love it, Tiffany. Awesome. Great to see you again. And thanks for being with us here on the Golf Kingdom. Thanks for having me. That was great stuff from Tiffany Tracy out there in Houston with GFX Golf. Now, jump out there, Orange Whip. You can find the, the light speed there, the power peel, all their training packages, everything you need to get to be fitness ready to play your best golf. Okay, putting time, and it's the scoring part of the game. It's where we gotta get the ball in the hole. If we can't get it in the hole, we can't score, we can't maybe win some skins for our buddies. Now, one of the putting adaptations that I really believe in, should you not be able to putt with your hands on the grip conventionally, is cross-handed, or what you hear is left hand low. I'm gonna show you the proper way to switch to try this if your hands are too active when you putt doing it conventional. Here's how you do it. Take your full swing grip. So this is my full swing grip right here. Full swing grip. When I putt, I just flip that index finger out. Now, in order to switch to cross-handed or left hand low, all I'm gonna do is slide my hands up and down and then put the trail hand index finger out right there. The mistake that's made when players grab this thing cross-handed or left hand low is you take your lead hand and you grip underneath like this. See my palm is facing the camera right there? You grip it right here 
and then you put this hand on, and now you have palms that are facing different directions. This one's facing this way, and this one's facing this way. You want your palms to match. So if you just take your full swing grip, right here, full swing grip, index finger out for putting conventional, and then just slide your hands and put the backhand finger out. Now you'll have the correct grip to putt cross-handed or left-hand low. Try this, especially if you're a cross-handed putter right now. Try getting this hand over more on top, and I bet it improves your path. And who knows, maybe you'll make some more of those key putts and win some more skin money from your buddies. Time to get serious and talk about mental game. Yeah, let's get up in your cranium. Let's get involved with what goes on in your head. And one word I've gotten lately is, coach, I wanna be more consistent. Let's get connected here mentally and talk about consistency, okay? I'm hearing you out there. Gotcha, we're connected. Cerebro's locked into your brains. Now, I got a quick question for you as we talk about mental game. I got a bowl of grapes here. Let's just say there were 60 grapes in this bowl, right here. Mm, these look delicious. But let's say I had 60 grapes in this bowl. Let me ask you a question. If I told you 15 of these grapes are poison, how many grapes are you gonna eat? So 60 grapes, 15 are poison. All the grapes look the same. How many grapes are you gonna eat if they're poison? Well, I hope you all said none. Okay, it may make you a better deal. 10 are poison, how many are you gonna eat? How about five are poison? How about one's poison? I hope you've said none to all of those. I don't care if there's one poison grape out of 60. I'm not popping it in and chewing it. Now, here's the question. Why am I talking about grapes? Well, a basket of range balls is about 60 balls. When you go practice, you get a basket of about 60 balls. If you're not consistently doing the same thing on every shot, bringing it over, taking a practice swing, setting up the same and hitting it, you're feeding yourself a poison grape. If you're not working on what I want you to work on in your game, maybe something you picked up here in the golf kingdom, if you're not working on that, you're just swinging and hitting balls, you're eating poison grapes. Now, one poison grape may not kill you. You might go, oh, I feel a little sick. Well, eat three or four and you might go, wow, did this get darker out here? Eat maybe 10 poison grapes and your buddies are kicking you on the ground going, hey, you okay down there? So poison grapes, golf, practice shots. Don't eat your old poison swing. Figure out what you want to work on. Get something from your coach to work on. Get out there and be focused when you practice. You do that, you won't feed poison to your golf swing. Now, stay tuned. We got some more awesome stuff coming up here in the Golf Kingdom. Do you struggle with your hands being too active when you putt? Well, Fusion Dynaline Training Aid is what you need to putt better. It clamps on your putter, you drop your alignment stick in the training aid, you put the training trident on the top of it, and then it touches your body and locks your stroke in place. It's impossible to wiggle your hands. Get Fusion Dynaline to control your stroke. Visit FusionPutting.com, place your order, and get free shipping today. of silly swing segment. Yes, it's a swing that I know I can fix and I know I can make better. So much like we struggle with making the right moves in golf and we make some silly things that make the ball go silly directions, I've got a swing that we're gonna look at and I'm gonna tell that player exactly how to fix it and how it could be better if they came to me for a lesson. So it's kind of a, a free lesson and free information for everybody out there to see how can you swing better? So let's just bring up this first swing. Let's bring it up and see what it looks like here. So here comes the swing. It's gonna come through twice and you're gonna see how this swing kind of moves. We're gonna pause it after the second time and we're gonna be able to see what happened. And what you saw was a very off balance player who had a couple of little loops in the back swing there. And the question is, did he have a loop issue or did he have a balance issue? If he was coming to me for a lesson, I would work on his footwork and his balance. So as he goes back, he kind of falls over his toes here and he loses his footwork. We want to keep the footwork going, just like throwing a ball. If he's throwing a ball, he keeps his footwork moving. He keeps his lower body moving. This player, when he goes back, his feet are very static and still, 
and it gets him stuck because he can't keep his feet moving. He can't keep his lower body moving coming down. Let's watch it again. Bring it back up here. Here comes, here comes the swing again. Right here, you can see as, as he swings, he's wobbling over in a swing. He's getting his footwork stuck. We want to keep that footwork moving, and that will eliminate all that looping and lassoing action. So his first thing he'd get from me would be, you know what? I got to get my footwork. I got to get my feet moving, and that'll keep the lower body moving. So that player, once again, I'd get a little footwork out of the front foot going back. I'd get the hips turning. So footwork, lead foot, hips turning, and then I get the back foot going just the same as throwing a ball, hitting a tennis ball, all these movements, hitting a baseball at the plate. You gotta have footwork to do all these things. If he was an athlete growing up, we would talk about all these other sports he probably played. Maybe if he was a good dancer, we might even get into some dance moves to help his golf swing. But as you saw him there, the key is starting from the ground up. Start with the easiest thing. Man, if I get him moving, I bet that little helicopter lassoing stops in his swing and he makes a fluid swing and goes through. So this has been the ministry of silly swings where I've taken a silly swing and I've given them a free lesson to help them understand how to hit it better. We've got the X-Putt technology all hooked up and ready to go. It's our putting simulator and it's our putting service announcement. Yes, the PSA to help you putt better. And this simulator is gonna help us with our visualization. Yes, we're gonna talk brick wall. Brick walls are strong, they're barriers. I'm gonna give you a visual barrier to help you putt better when you get out there and you have to visualize something as you green read. Now, let's come to the X-Putt technology here on the big screen. And what we want to see here is I've got a putt set up and it's a, just a little bit of a left to righter here. You can see the white line, I mean a right to lefter, the white line, it's going to curve this way. So you can see the straight line goes to the hole and then there's the curve of the putt. We're going to imagine that straight line that you saw, let me see if I can bring it up again. We're going to imagine that straight line right here is your brick wall. I've got to hit this putt on this line and I can't hit that brick wall before the ball gets to the hole. I've got to make sure I play enough break that the ball doesn't strike this wall as it goes to the hole. So here's the wall, there's the hole. I got to make sure I keep the ball high enough on my break to not hit the wall somewhere short because if it hits the wall short of the hole, it's got no chance of going in. So here's what we got. I've got a 17 footer here, roughly 17 feet, three inches. It's downhill three inches. So I'm going to play this out to the right, see if I can play enough break and see if I can keep it above that brick wall. Looks like a good putt, it's got a chance. Bang, right there, come back to me. How about that, guys? That baby was dead center of the whole way. I got it out there to the right and it was in the whole way. So I played it high enough to keep it above that brick wall. Now, here's a 36 footer. Let's look at this one here. I can bring, I'll bring up the break on it here. Now, this one's longer. I've got more break coming to the left here. There's my brick wall straight line, so. 36 footer coming downhill an inch. Oh, yeah, about, about a foot and a little bit. So I've got to play enough break on this one here to get it to come in from that side. And look at the amount of break on this one. It's way out there. So I've got to play a lot of break on this one to keep it above the brick wall. So it's going down a foot. It's got a ton of break. I've almost got to aim off the screen here. Here we go. Let's see if I can get this right going down there. And you're going to see, oh, wow, look at it breaking off here. It's gonna break off and miss way low. So that would have hit the wall before the hole. So come back on me. We've gotta hit that one with not enough break and it would have hit the wall way below the hole. So here it is again, I get one more chance at it, gang. I gotta play a ton of break here. Let's see if I can play enough break and get enough speed to keep it above the wall as it goes to the hole. I hit it a little harder. Staying up, staying up, staying up. Oh, it would have hit the wall right there. So once again, visualize your brick wall going to the hole. It's a fun little thing. If you want to, you could put an alignment stick down by the hole and point it at your ball on the low side of the cup and use your imaginary brick wall, X putt. It's been great technology to help us hit these putts just right and see our brick wall and keep it on the high side of the hole. Let's talk about something here in Time to Rise called Karma. 
there's good karma, there's bad karma, but I saw some bad karma the other day in a playing lesson. Two players were going back and forth about miss it. It was like the Caddyshack scene. Miss it, Noonan, miss it, Noonan. You know what, in golf, we don't root against other players. And in sports, it's bad karma to root against someone else. Let me give you an example. I'm a little different in this regard. I'm a Notre Dame guy, I'm a Florida State guy, I'm a Duke guy. Those three things don't kind of blend together sometimes, but you know what? If there's a kicker at a Notre Dame football game for another team, I don't know, let's just pick a random team. Let's just pick um, Purdue. And he's got a chance to kick the field goal to win the game over my fighting Irish. You know what? I'm rooting for him to make it. That's different, isn't it? Because you know what? That game was lost before he ever had a chance to kick that kick. You know what? He may draw on that kick sometime in the future as a success. So I want him, that kid, to make that kick. Same thing in golf. You watch a tour player lose a playoff because a guy misses a short putt, his body language isn't, yeah, I won. It's, oh man, what a crummy way to win. I hate seeing things won on a misstep, a missed kick, a missed shot. If we're gonna get beat, we wanna get beat by someone who did something good. We congratulate him and we're better next time. My challenge to you is this. Don't root against other people, other things, other teams. I don't care if you're a passionate fan. Stay with your team, root for them, but if another team has a chance to beat you, you know what, good for them. Root for them to succeed, and next time you won't have that bad karma working against you. Well, it was another great show for you. Let's give the quick recap. We talked about thing one and thing two right off the bat in our pop culture segment. Then we got involved in the mental side of the game. Yes, we talked about don't eat poison grapes. It says it right there, don't eat poison grapes. And then the last important thing I want you to take away from the show is the brick wall from the putting service announcement. PSA in the Strano notes. Keep your ball above the brick wall as you putt it at the hole and it won't ever miss low. Now, if you're interested in more Golf Kingdom stuff, jump out on social media. Follow us on all the social media platforms. If you have an Amazon Alexa device, ask Alexa to open the Golf Kingdom skill. Yeah, you'll get a tip from me, your host, Rob Strano, every day. And as always, to find all the past shows, Go download our channel on Roku and on Amazon Fire TV. Thanks again for being with me here in another episode of The Golf Kingdom.